Hello everybody, welcome back to Combinatorial Geometry, Part 3. Today we're going to be looking at Halley's Theorem, which is one of the most important results of combinatorial geometry. So, given n convex sets, so here we have convex again, x1, x2, so on, and xn, such that their intersections taken three at a time are non-empty, then the intersection of all of them is non-empty. And that's a really strong claim. We only need that three of them at a time are non-empty to show that all of them are non-empty. Or the intersection is non-empty. So obviously the word convex here is important because I wouldn't have included it. I could have just said sets, x1, x2, and so on. Um, but obviously convex is part of, is, is a key part here. So let's look at n equals 3, right? This is the smallest number of sets we could have. And since we're dealing with convex sets, again, I'm going to use the geometric interpretation of continuity, and I'm just going to represent those as circles. And so a natural way to represent the intersection of sets while also talking about circles is the Venn diagram. Uh, so most of you should be familiar with this. But anyway, for n equals 3, we're given that the intersections taken 3 at a time is non-empty. So this right here is non-empty. But our claim, or what we get from the theorem, is that the intersection of all of them is non-empty. But that's what we already have. So really this is just a trivial case. We need more to work with. So let's go to four sets. Then then we, we're we looking at the intersections of them taken three at a time. So that gives us four different sets, right? So let me write these out. All right, so we have x1, uh, and, and here this is the union symbol. This is not an n. So we have x1, x2, and x3, x1, x2, and x4, x1, x3, and x4, and x2, x3, and x4. So we have these four different sets, and we're given that they're non-empty. So we have uh, points inside of them, right? And actually, I'm going to start my numbering backwards. So I'm going to say v1 here is an element of this set. Uh, v2 is an element of this set. V, v3 an element of this set. And v4 an element of this set. So we have these four points, which are elements of convex sets. And as such, they are all contained in sort of the union of all four sets. So we know that, and, and, and the union of convex sets is convex, I believe. Or, well, that's not true. but. The point is, uh, well, the intersection, the intersection of convex sets is convex. So each of these four points is an element of a convex set. Now, the point is, we have these four points, v1, v2, and so on, some sort of lying in the plane somewhere, right? So we can consider their convex hull. And we have two we have two cases for the convex hull, right? As we saw in the last video, it was very useful to look at cases for convex hulls. So obviously the first case is where the convex hull is just a quadrilateral, as such. And another case is where the convex hull is a triangle. And so another point is inside of here, let's say V4. <laughs> Then what can we what can we use this to claim about? Well, we want to show that there exists a point which is in all four of these sets, right? So consider the intersection of v2, v4, and v1, v3. 
also this intersection point. And I claim that this point, which I'll just call V, I claim that this point is in each and every set. So why is that? Well, we can see that the points V1 and V3, they sort of share a set, and that set is X2 intersect X4, right? And since this line, V1, V3, any, or this segment, any point on this segment must be in uh, the intersection of X2 and X4. Similarly, V2 and V4, uh, they share the intersection of X1 and X3. So any, any point on the segment V2, V4 must be in the intersection of X1 and X3. So the intersection has to, the intersection of these two segments is on both segments, which means it's in X2 intersect X4, and it's in X1 intersect X3, which means it's in all four of the points. And that is a proof for n equals 4. So obviously it would be exhaustive to do this for each and every positive integer, uh, and that is where induction comes in. So let's say we have n sets, just arbitrarily. And what we can do is, since we've already la laid the groundwork here to show that for some, some four of the three sets, or some, basically if I take four of my, uh, of the triples, right? If I take four triples, then I get uh, an n equals 4 case, right? So we can sort of build up in this way. So if we have n sets, we want to look at the intersections of n minus 1 of them. We can assume that they're all non-empty. Why can we assume that? Because of this, right? If we're always given that the taken 3 at a time are non-empty, then we can take our uh, our are triples and we can construct quadruples and so our induction should show that we can take quadruples and make quintuples and so on and so forth so if we have n sets then let's look at the intersections of n minus one of them and in fact we only have to consider four points again so let's consider four points, v1, v2, v3, and v4 again. And here we sort of ha we have the same pattern of intersections, except for v4 we're just not including x4, and you know so on. So we have these sort of vacant uh, vacancies here. And what we wish to show is that again these four points should be able to should should pretty much show our claim. Right, and it's pretty much the same proof as here, except that we just have these extra sets tacked on. Right, this is all I've added from the last part. But we notice, if I were to draw v1 and v3 like this, then um, then what I claimed in the last and then and this part that the segment v1, v3 was containing uh, all points in, or, or contain, all of it was contained in the intersection of x4 and x2. Well now we just have that v1 and v3, their segment, con the segment connecting them is contained in x2, x4, and the rest of the sets. So really this rest of the sets business is just tacked on here as extra information. We can consider these four points and what we'll get is a, p a point which is in the intersection of x1, x3, and so on. Uh, and the intersection of x2, x4, and so on.
and therefore that, that intersection is just x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on. So this actually completes the proof by induction. Although I forgot to talk about this case where um, the convex hull is a triangle. It is in fact that v4 would be our point. Why is that? Well, we could just consider drawing segments from each of the vertices of the triangle to the vertex in the in the center and we see that these three uh, segments this is actually an overkill of, of an intersection but these three segments obviously will contain um, v2 v4 will be you know uh, x1 and x3 and then v1 v4 will be uh, x2 and x3 so then the intersection and, and then v3 and v4 is x1 x2 so the intersection of all three of those segments which is v4 must you know lie in all of those uh, in all of those sets so both of these um, both of these cases uh, show that sh show our claim for n equals four, and also show our claim for uh, the general claim. So anyway, this was a bit of a wordier proof. Um, I might have something of a, ru a rough sketch for it in the description. But anyway, I hope you liked this video, and I hope it demystified Halley's theorem. Uh, when I first read up on Halley's theorem, it was a bit confusing. Um, but then again, that's what uh, learning is. It's being confused. And then, you know, understanding it well enough to teach it to another person. So, thank you for watching, and I appreciate all of your support, and I hope to see you in my next video.